What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is Tropical Depression 9. It hasn't been upgraded yet, but we do have the latest advisory. And what are we looking at? First of all, we have a hurricane watch issued for the Cayman Islands. We have a tropical storm watch issued for uh, Jamaica. Hurricane hunters are en route to investigate the system. So we'll have to pay attention to that as time continues to go on. So yeah, it's still a tropical depression. Wind's still 35 miles per hour. Pressure still at 1,006, but... We have two big updates for you. The first uh, the first big update, if we take a look at the cone, is that there is a tropical storm watch here in Jamaica and a hurricane watch for the Cayman Islands as they are expecting to get tropical storm and hurricane uh, impacts in the next uh, 48 hours. So that's what we're looking at right now. The second big thing is that Hermine got named in the uh, eastern Atlantic. So whenever this thing does become a tropical storm, it will be Tropical Storm Ian. Now, uh, the I name is the most retired name of the entire hurric uh, hurricane season, no matter what list. Uh, I can give you a couple of exa examples real quickly. Hurricane I uh, Ivan in 2004, that was that, that was the one that got, uh, that got uh, retired, and for obvious reasons too. It, hit, it just pretty much destroyed a lot of Alabama and Florida right there. So yeah, that's what we're looking at right here. We have the latest here from Florida. Uh, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has declared a state of emergency for 24 counties and urges Floridans to prepare for impacts for, uh, from Tropical Depression 9, which is expected to become a major hurricane at the time of landfall. And another thing we need to talk about, too, when we take a look at the cone real quickly, is that the cone has shifted more towards the north over the last two, uh, two updates because the original cone had it near the Naples area, then more towards the uh, n then more towards uh, Sarasota that air area right there, and now uh, it's now expected to make landfall just south of the Tampa area, which means the which means uh, St. Petersburg, Tampa, Pinellas, and Hillsborough County they can potentially see some hurricane impacts if this verifies. But right now is right now, and this is five days out. I need to you need to keep that in mind but either way if this does verify uh, the, uh tampa the uh, considering the huge population and the fact that they haven't really seen a hurricane at this caliber in a long time that could cause a lot of uh, cause a lot of issues right there so we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on what is fueling this ocean heat content and the global sea temperatures 28 to 30 degrees celsius through much of the caribbean it starts getting warmer once you approach the cayman islands and cuba right there the ocean heat content where this area where this tropical depression is now it is over ocean heat content and exceeding 100 uh, kilojoules per centimeter right here. So yeah, that is rocket fuel. And if it uses it correctly and it uses it uh, right, then basically that can this thing can rapidly intensify. But if we take a look at the satellite imagery, we do have the majority of convection over the western side of it. That is starting to, uh, to change as we're seeing more convection slowly be bleeding more towards to the center of circulation and more uh, eastward as time continues to go on. That's because the wind shear, as of right now, is continuing to move more and more towards uh, uh, towards the east of the system. I mean, it's not really moving, but the system is moving more towards the west and environmental conditions are getting more conducive by the hour. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and show you the track models and the intensity. This is why the NHC moved the cone up, cone up, ladies and gentlemen. We have several models moving it more towards the south, uh, uh, towards a little bit of the south of Tampa area, but they have been shifting slowly more towards the, no uh, the north that I've been noticing. So that's basically what we're looking at right there, which that also means there's more going to be potentially more time over water and more time for this system to strengthen uh, once it enters the Gulf of Mexico. So I want everyone to keep that in mind as we continue to look at it. Intensity models are also pretty interesting. We have the H Wharf at Category 4 strength. The rest of the miles, at least for now, are around Category 2, Category 3 strength. Uh, right there. It, right now, for me, it's too early to give an estimate uh, as this is not a very e quickly evolving situation, but I will update you guys as the situation progresses. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs. We're going to run the H-Mon, the H-Wharf, and GFS runs. The H-Mon is more the more w w westward track run right here. If we take a look at the H-Mon, you see this organizing, developing, starting to strengthen right there. Moving west of the of Grand Cayman right there, making landfall on the western tip of Cuba right there, and then it starts to really organize. Look at this. This gets down to a 930 millibar uh, hurricane right there. That's a 
that's an insanely low pressure, which means if we do this as well as the max winds at 850 or 148 knots, that's a likely a mid-range Category 4 hurricane as it's entering the Gulf of Mexico. So this is something re you can't really play around with uh, right here, and especially as this is going to be impacting Florida in the next five days. And then this thing starts uh, starts shifting more towards the uh, towards the east. So yeah, that's a, a, a model we're going to have to pay attention to. It has a westward bias to it, but I think as time continues to go on, it's going to start shifting slowly more towards the east as certain more as more certainty continues to come. Let's go ahead and run the GFS system right here for uh, for nine, which is soon to be Tropical Storm Ian. We're going to go ahead and go to the start right here. The GFS has this continuing to move, organizing, developing, strengthening, uh, approaching the Cayman Islands, moving a little bit west to it. Has it making landfall once again the western tip of Cuba, similar to where the HMON is, and then it continues to, uh, to turn towards the east, and then we have it making landfall potentially after it's done after it's done stalling, and they have this thing weak, weakening considerably at landfall. I'm not entirely buying this because. Uh, because a the Gulf of Mexico waters, if we take a look at that, they're very piping hot, especially in near the Florida in, in near Florida right there. And b if we take a look at the wind shear at least for right now, there's very low wind shear. So until it hits land, there's really got, not going to be that much stopping this thing. But yeah, I don't really buy the intensity at landfall from the GFS. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on uh, on it. So yeah, this thing moves through the U.S. Uh, moves uh, moves uh, through uh, New York, potentially into Canada, and that's the last we'll hear of that. And now we'll go ahead and show you the H Wharf model right right here. This is what we're looking at right here. That you see this thing organizing, developing, starting to strengthen, and then becomes a hurricane uh, southwest of Jamaica. It moves uh, moves west of the Cayman Islands, although they could potentially see some very strong or uh, tropical storm or hurricane force winds, and then moves through, uh, moves to Cuba right here. And then it kind of or and that kind of organizes, strengthens a little bit more. The wind field starts getting a little bit larger. And we're looking at a potentially high-end Category 4 hurricane from the H Wharf right there, and that's pretty much where we have uh, at the end of these runs. So that's really going to close this video right here. Uh, here's the key takeaways I want you to take away from this. One, if you're in southern Florida, start making some preparations. Uh, preparation is key, and as time continues to go on, these models are going to get more confident, uh, confident. So that's the first thing. The second, uh, the second thing is that if you're in Florida, if you're in Cuba, if you're in the Cayman Islands, take this very seriously. Share this video if you can. And the last thing is, is that we're having our interview with Ethan WX tomorrow. Once again, please be sure you do not miss it. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps me out. Helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.